you can't talk about Volkswagen without talking about Nazis. It was the original Nazi Model T. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people do. Uh, so I want to tell a little bit of the history of where this comes from. Uh, the original name for the Volkswagen Beetle uh, was the Kraft Dirch Freud Wagon, uh, or the Strength Through Joy Car. That phrase taken from the name of Nazi Germany's labor movement. It became known in Germany as the KDF Car. Announced May 26, 1938, in Fallersleben at the factory cornerstone, cornerstone laying ceremony by Adolf Hitler himself. Hitler wanted a practical car for average people, um, and the Nazi government is going to send representatives to Detroit to meet with the guy that first came up with that idea, Henry Ford. And Henry Ford is going to give lots of advice uh, and maybe more uh, to the Nazi government about the mass production of a people's car. Seven years later, in 1945, Hitler is going to take what he knows is his last ride through a crumbling empire, and he doesn't want to be uh, he doesn't want to be conspicuous about it in a Mercedes. So he takes his last ride uh, through that through through Germany uh, in a Volkswagen Beetle in '45, and there are images of all of this. The Beetle uh, was a symbol of the Nazi experiment. Uh, the Nazi project had a kind of uh, industrial socialism to it, with the people's car being a symbol of that. And there's tons of stuff on this, and uh, including a lot of photos of like Hitler driving around in a, in a Volkswagen Beetle, which is really weird. And you think, why is it weird to see Nazis driving the Beetle around and know that this was their, this was Hitler's flivver or the baby Hitler, some people called it? Because it's ironic, uh, don't you think, that the Volkswagen Beetle holds sort of like the opposite place in the American imagination. We don't look at the VW Beetle and think Nazis. Uh, we think uh, hippies. We think kind of like, I don't know, uh, humble community college professors driving their Beetles around in the 60s and 70s. Uh, in 1995, when Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, perhaps the the, the most visible symbol of this end of the American San Francisco acid counterculture of the 1960s. When Garcia dies, Rolling Stone magazine publishes a full-page advertisement for Volkswagen that is just a drawing of a Volkswagen microbus with a single tear falling out of its headlight. Uh, and it just said, Jerry Garcia, 1942 to 1995. Yes, he was only 53 years old uh, when he died. I didn't understand that when I was younger. Uh, I, I thought he was an older dude. Uh, the 60s were rough. But either way, you know, the, the notion that these cars are kind of like the hippie car in America and they're about peace and love and that sort of thing when they are actually like built by this evil Nazi company, that's, that's sort of interesting. I, that might correspond even to a little bit of uh, the, the stuff I was talking about at the first end of this podcast in terms of the weird legacy of World War II um, filtering into American cultural life through cars. 